presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Everyday. Relief and recovery are in full swing in the aftermath of Hurricane Joaquin. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keishla Adderley. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Joaquin is still twisting in the Atlantic, heading for Europe. And even though it's a little early, we may want to start paying attention to another storm that could follow a more traditional path for a storm. Basil Dean joins us for the latest in Basil. First, let's talk about Joaquin. That system is moving and making a little bit of history. Well, uh, if we turn to our satellite picture, you can see uh, this here is uh, Hurricane Joaquin. It's about 245 miles to the north of the island of Bermuda, and it is moving very quickly now toward the uh, north, northeast at about 12 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds around 85 miles per hour, but we expect that system to weaken by Wednesday to a cold core low. We also expect it to reach at least the remnants of that uh, low to reach uh, Europe uh, by the weekend, so it seems to so they will be getting some of the leftovers uh, from uh, Hurricane uh, Joaquin. And then we have this tropical wave, Christopher. It's about a thousand miles to the east of the Los Angeles. It is moving toward the west at about 15 miles per hour, and it's much too far out to tell whether or not it's going to affect us. It's at least about two weeks away. But nevertheless, we will watch it over the next several days and see whether or not it makes that trek across the Atlantic. The probability of it developing over the next five days is about 20%. And then close to the home, we have this uh, low pressure to the north of us associated with a frontal system, which will also provide some cloud cover and a few showers over the northwest Bahamas. Christopher, there you have it. All right, Basil, thanks a lot. Now, the cost to rebuild and restore in the wake of Hurricane Joaquin expected to be an enormous bill. But a determined prime minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, says this country will rebuild. Mr. Christie was making his track around affected family islands, assessing the damage firsthand and speaking with distraught residents who, while grateful to be alive, told horrifying tales of encounters with the monster storm. And as the nation rejoices that no life has been lost or claimed by this powerful hurricane due to yet, the focus is now on bringing relief to scores of residents left with nothing but literally the clothes on their backs. Here's Clint Watson. There has been massive um, devastation by the impact of the hurricane and that one finds it difficult now to quantify it, um, but it's going to be a very, very heavy burden for the country. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie recognizes that there's a long road ahead as the country pushes to recover from the massive Category 4 Hurricane Joaquin that left indescribable destruction in some areas. Mr. Christie says one thing's clear, the government won't be able to meet these needs on its own. I'm going to have to make an appeal and continue to make appeals uh, for assistance. One in restoring and you know we're magnificent at being able to restore quickly B and C um, but we're going to need help and we're going to need to have poles replaced um, to, to get the provision of electricity back in order um, and so again uh, we've made a commitment to go all out to bring relief in the shortest possible time to bring restoration in the shortest possible time um, we have now spread our teams around the affected areas. We have technical people making assessments. Those assessments will be fed into NEMA, and then we will be able to arm ourselves um, with how we can go about approaching and advising the Bahamian public and the international public as to what we are facing. Regular access to South Long Island, believed to be one of the most hard-hit areas, has been cut off due to flooding. There's a similar situation in Acklands and Crooked Island. Prime Minister Christie traveled to Barry, South Long Island, on off-bat helicopter carrying supplies. He was overwhelmed by what he saw, as residents waiting on supplies were shocked to see him emerge from the helicopter. They pointed out houses to me, the, the, the yard or the, um, where we landed. Um, the house was destroyed. Other houses in the immediate vicinity were destroyed, demolished, um, or terribly um, broken up. And um, people lost all of their um, belongings. And so clearly, 
um, there is evidence of great devastation, or I call utter devastation. Prime Minister Christie says he is encouraged by the non-stop flow of supplies going to the hotted areas. He says they are constantly receiving reports from around the world from organizations wishing to donate supplies. But more importantly, what really impressed him. This indomitable spirit, right, that yeah, I've been knocked down, I've been wrecked, but I'm going to get back up. And you know, they just, they just wanted the promise that we were coming back. And, and this promise that, that we're not just going to leave them there. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Well, after experiencing the storm on Ragged Island over the past few days, Arvon Albrey and cameraman Cameron, Karen Miller are heading back home. They've been pulling a yeoman's task over the last couple of days covering the storm. Now, as the two of them travel by mailboat, they stopped in Exuma, where residents are putting supplies together for their brothers and sisters in those affected areas. Here's Vaughn. In Staniel Key, Baratari, and the Black Point Exuma, the focus appears to be getting supplies to the residents of Long Island and other islands in the central and southeast Bahamas devastated by Hurricane Joaquin. I spoke with Bob Smith of Coastline Adventures who took two groups of persons from Georgetown to Salt Pond, Long Island on Sunday. The Stewart Manor resident says what he saw was utter destruction in South Long Island, including clothes, furniture and other household goods in waterclogged roads and even in trees. South Long Island roads, he says, are still impassable. Smith was busy ferrying other groups again on Monday. Paratari resident a Mrs. McKinsey was gathering food supplies and other necessities for her daughter, son-in-law and a grandchild who live in Long Island. She says they are alive and coping, but their home took a battering. Georgetown was reportedly a beehive of activity as boats and planes were chartered to Long Island, San Salvador, Crooked Island, Rum Key, and other islands severely impacted by the Category 4 hurricane that hovered over the central Bahamas for more than two days. In Black Point, a six-member Defense Force team went on patrol throughout the Exuma Keys. It is reported that illegal immigrants and drug and people smuggling operations take advantage during times of national disasters when the attention is on cleanup and recovery. A Bahamas Electricity Corporation team from Exuma reported that Crooked Island is still without power, its roads impassable, with water, lights, poles, and lines down. Mayor Guana still has lots of water, but the power grid appears to be fine. That's according to BC's Carlton Taylor. Otherwise, power is back on in Inagua and Ragged Island, while telephone and internet services remain off. In the Exuma Keys, I'm Vaughn Albury, ZNS Network News. The fishing community of Long Island has suffered a devastating blow due to the passage of this storm. Our Julian Gibson spoke with one of the committee members of the Long Island Development Association. All the fishing boats that was operating in August and September, all of them up on the rocks. Everything break up. So, and, and the fishing was the backbone of Long Island. Now, the, the guys who have no boats are going in. None. I don't know what they're going to do. I tell you the truth. I don't know. The government got to get in there quick and help those those guys because I mean like like that's they those boats employed most of the young men in Long Island that's how they make their living by going to the sea smelling two weeks on the boat and and no boats even the fish houses some of the fish houses that that buy the crawfish from the boats uh, one or two of them uh, destroyed I mean completely destroyed those boats that that uh, that destroyed if you look and to buy one of them to buy one of them and how they had them reek with water makers uh, radars and all the equipment and what they need, you're going to have six, seven hundred thousand for each one of them. If you have to buy that right now, you know, those guys had everything in those boats. You know, you had two freezer units, you had um, large fuel tanks, you had water makers to turn water, you know, the salt and the fresh water, you had everything on those boats, man, everything on those boats. Because, you know, they had those boats for years and they keep on putting money to, to upgrade them, upgrade them, and to buy one of those boats now, you can't afford it. What do you think needs to happen now moving forward to help these guys? What is the quick solution in your opinion? Well, I don't know, but I know um, we really, those guys really need to get those boats. I don't know if they can salvage. I know my friend Emil, one of his boats completely break in half. She went up on the land with 700 gallons, 1,700 gallons of diesel, 
a thousand gallons of gas and say 1,200 gallons of water. So that's that's almost twenty thousand dollars right there with just the fuel he had on board. And because they was getting ready to go out fishing, and this storm happened like two days before they was ready to go, so he had to stay home and it catch them already loaded. They already spent money to make that trip. Also tonight, we now have a first-hand account from San Salvador. A resident there tells us tonight exactly how it felt during the storm. Reverend Stephen S. Brown spoke to our Julian Gibson about that dreaded night. I was right home in prayer. Uh, that was the longest nine hours or four hours I've ever experienced in my entire life. Trust me, Julian, my heart is so full. It, it, it was like so bad. I couldn't believe, uh, you know, we could have made it through there. I, I realized how bad things could be, but I never thought I would experience it. I spoke about people when, when they would go through things, you could tell them, you know, hey man, be good, God will be with you. But boy, when you experience it, it's a different story. What kind of conditions you guys actually had? Like the wind, how hard was it blowing, the rain? Boy, you know, they were saying to us that it was like 130. Well, you know, in my estimation, that had to have been going on more than 200 miles an hour. It wasn't much rain, but the storm itself just sitting upon you, going at five miles an hour, beating upon you at 150 to 60 miles an hour winds, and they, well, they estimated as 120 to 125, but beating upon you that slow for that long, you know, they was like blows you could not even accept. BCU, how's the people of our San Salvador doing? Well, you know, it's a mental strain, a lot of stress. I, I moved by faith yesterday. I had to come in. It's that bad. When you look around, it's almost like nothing there. Houses are flattened. I literally saw a lady house split in half. And the china closet is standing, but the house is in half. See some of your friends and their houses are flattened. Where did the side. people go? Because I saw some of the pictures and I see the houses completely devastated. And I'm wondering, the persons who occupied these houses, where were they? You know, boy, you know, it's so amazing. I give you the experience in United States. The shelter, the Zion Baptist Church that where I pastor, you know, we had 14 adults, a blind woman, and 15 children, including my family. I stayed home though, but when that, I mean, the, the ferocious winds them kicked up and started to tear the roof off of that church. When you talk about where did they go, they stayed there. They prayed, the lady with the house was split in half, they stayed there, but you know what happened? This is the miracle. We were in prayer and I prayed with the gentleman who was on the 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 L airways. And I prayed with Minister Lila May Adams also. The three of us was in prayer, along with I would say the whole Bahamas. And Brother Julian, between you and me, the minute that prayer was over, that wind ceased. Gave us 20 to 25 minutes the most to get out of every area that was already down to get out the lady was able to get out of her house was split out the the folk in the in the church was able to get out just enough time and then it came again so in answering that question it was like god just gave us enough time to get to some area that is more safer the major Hurricane Joaquin is one of the most powerful to have ever hit the Bahamas. Now, it was a very weird storm, and so there were some peculiarities that it presented. Our Cleopatra Murphy spoke with Deputy Director at the Department of Meteorology, Basil Dean, about the weirdness of Joaquin. Hurricane Joaquin rained devastation on the Bahamas, leaving a path of destruction in its wake, with entire communities underwater and homes destroyed. 
Deputy Director of the Department of Meteorology, Basil Dean, says what was unique about this storm is that it sat over the central and southeastern islands for an extended period. Those islands uh, took a constant pounding for a pretty long time of very, very strong winds. Uh, and that was compounded by, of course, storm surge and torrential rainfall, uh, which uh, lasted for the same period. And hence, we all now see the aftermath, uh, extensive flooding, catastrophic uh, damage uh, to, to, to structure and infrastructure. Meteorologists initially recorded Joaquin as a tropical depression, then into a tropical storm, and it ballooned into a Category 1 hurricane in a matter of hours and eventually grew to a powerful Category 4 storm in the Bahamas. Dean says... Joaquin was different from other storms that have impacted the Bahamas in the past 25 years. He said this particular weather system did not develop off the African coast as hurricanes usually do, but formed east of the Bahamas. These uh, systems do have the potential once the atmospheric conditions are favorable, they can intensify very rapidly. We now again saw that with uh, Hurricane Joaquin, which formed very close to us and uh, hence the time uh, line or the time frame uh, for warning was reduced due to the fact of the closeness of that development. Long Island experienced major flooding throughout Joaquin, something Dean says it is prone to without hurricanes. He says with global warming producing an ideal environment for hurricanes, officials expect their intensity to increase. If it requires heat energy to develop, and I am having global warming, meaning that my temperatures are warming, then what it is saying is that I'm providing uh, the kind of fuel that is necessary for the development and intensification of these systems. So, yes, that is a very strong possibility, and that is one of the reasons why nations around the world are meeting on a regular basis to address this issue of climate change and to see how best we can slow down the trend of uh, of global warming. Moving forward, Dean says the country must develop a strategy to get people to safe havens faster, but anticipates it will be difficult because the Bahamas is an archipelago. The senior meteorologist says after witnessing the devastation hurricanes can cause, he hopes Bahamians will take them more seriously. When the watches and warning goes out, take no chance. It is your responsibility to ensure the safety of you and your family. No one else can do that. He says the department continues to provide the necessary information on all weather systems, but people must act. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Long Island has largely been the focus in the relief effort, but San Salvador is also getting the attention of descendants of that island. Our Julian Gibson spoke with Elaine Lightfoot. Since the hurricane, we haven't heard anything from them. There's no communication. I understand that the telco is down, so we're having difficulty. My mother's having a heart attack, just trying to find out what's going on up there. We don't know what's happening, but we're sending food and water supplies anyway to make sure that they're straight over there. I understand that a lot of people in NASA are also sending goods back to the people in San Salvador. Well, I mean, family is all you got, so you have to make sure your family is straight. You can't be here and you're happy eating and, you know, having a good time and they're over there not, you're not knowing what's going on. So we're sending this stuff to make sure that they stay happy and healthy. I mean, we wish we can be there physically to do what we can do, but family is all you got. Keith, Kate, Birdell, and Arlington, we are here, we're praying for you, we're putting something on the boat for you. Go to Lady Emerald, pick up what we sent for you, and if there any, anything you need, please pick up the phone, call us when it come up, and we'll be there to give you whatever it is and give you support. Whatever we can do, we're here. You're not alone, we're in this together. How concerning it is when you used to texting somebody, used to watching up somebody every day, used to telephone calls two and three times a day, and for three and four days, you can't hear nothing. It's, I, I am so concerned. I feel like I feel like I mean, we we just they're, they're, I feel like they're dead. We don't know what's going on. Nobody's saying anything. It, I feel like I've lost my family. I've lost my life because we don't know what's happening right now. I just want to know or hear their voice so we can feel like something is happening that they're okay and know that they're fine. It's really rough when you hear and not knowing anything. Executives of the local government administrators association traveled to Long Island today to assess the damage sustained and to lend their support to Island Administrator Therese Budel-Bethel. 
Association President Neil Campbell, Administrator for Exuma, said Poodle Bethel is organizing a number of command centers for those in the various settlements to receive emergency social services assistance. The Administrator, Ms. Poodle Bethel, is asking that persons from Petty to call on. They meet at the NGM Major High School for Social Services Registration for the Needs Assessment at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And those persons from Gordon to Hamilton will meet at 9 a.m. at the Clarence Town Community Center. And she's also asking for those from the Zafin Fairness and Consultative Committee to also report to the Clarence Town Community Center at 9 a.m. She's also asking for persons who are expressing some concern of getting in contact with their loved ones in that particular area. We use a fax line, which is 33 7 30 31. And if persons were to the message, she is, she is, uh, she is uh, agreeing to um, carry the um, fax uh, copies to the center and distribute them to those to those individuals. She's asking for assistance for the local um, residents there. Uh, they are definitely need a, a lot of water and other food items. She has given me a lift. And it ranges from batteries, water, blankets, flashlights, emergency lights, medical supplies, portable stove, with gas, gas, tents, tampons. All right, that was Neil Campbell. Again, that fax number to send a message to loved ones in Long Island is 337 3031. Again, 337 3031. Meanwhile, the island of Exuma is continued to be used as a hub for international and local agencies to deploy volunteers and send out supplies to the southern islands. The NEMA Command Center has also been established to coordinate the efforts. Campbell said there's a concern that supplies are only being sent to one island, but they want to ensure everyone that does not happen. We're finding though that a lot of uh, persons from the Providence and elsewhere, uh, a lot of lots of here just sending things into Long Island and sometimes only run it into one particular area, which is having it where it's constant distribution to one particular area and they're dealing with it in Clarence and they're seeing all the stuff that that tells that indeed through the course of the day as I was there, I was there a lot of supplies coming in and definitely they were taking names and distributing as persons came forward. As far as uh, in the in the Clarence Town area, once but once they do a need the system, then it is definitely where the administrative law and social services and the other volunteers will get to those persons and, and they themselves will collect those items and they will carry it to their, their various homes. At this point, there's nothing very, very uh, bulky. It's just basically the uh, four, four items, um, seven and napkins and other things like that, tissue, um, toilet tissue, uh, towels, and other just smaller canvas, and I saw a lot of food items there also. Well, this just in, Therese Boodle Bethel, Family Island Administrator for Long Island, wishes to advise residents from Petties to Salt Pond, affected by Hurricane Joaquin, to meet at the NGM Major High School in Buckley's at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, October 6th. That's tomorrow. Members of the Disaster Preparedness Committee are also asked to attend that meeting. Residents from Gordon's to Hamilton's are to meet at Clarence Town's Community Center at 9 a.m on Tuesday. On hand will also be personnel from the Department of Social Services. They'll be there to assist all in need. Residents in New Providence who wish to provide assistance to their relatives and others impacted by the hurricane on Long Island are asked to call telephone number 337-3031. Again, that telephone number 337-3031 to render assistance to residents in Long Island. Well, as the relief effort continues to assist persons living on those islands most impacted by Hurricane Joaquin, one airline is miles high with its initiative, adding rescue missions to their busy itinerary. Kelsey Johnson camped out at the airport today and tells us about these missions of mercy. More than 30 residents from Crooked Island are in New Providence tonight thanks to pilots of the Trans Island Airways. They conducted silent evacuation missions over the weekend. Crooked Island was one of several islands devastated by the Category 4 hurricane. From all the islands, I would have to, to check um, our records to give you an exact number. I can tell you right now to Crooked Islands, um, it has been 36 people. I know a few minutes ago we brought two people in from Rum Key. Um, and, and the number keeps growing. We, we go down to the airport, how it works is our pilots take the supplies in and then, you know, 
we're building a relationship with the people there and our team on the ground will say, you know, so-and-so is 90 years old, she's got a bad leg, and at that point we say, okay, you can come out. If it's someone who's just looking for a ride in or a ride out, we don't, we don't do that. We give the priority to the people that actually need to go in and out um, of the island. Sometimes we'll take people in as long as they're people that, you know, we deem are necessary to help with the relief effort. If they're just people looking to take pictures, you know, we don't have space for them. Paul Arana says that whenever he gets the call to fly in, he and his crew don't hesitate, even though it might be a little challenge on some of the islands. We've evacuated everyone from 16 years old to, you know, it's, it's not polite to ask some people their age, but I would say in the upper 80s. Um, their purpose for evacuation hasn't actually been injuries directly related to um, the hurricane, more so medical conditions that were pre-existing that have been complicated as a result of the hurricane. So where we've needed to get them insulin or other medical attention that due to a shortage of supplies or damaged equipment, they're no longer able to receive the attention they need. Typically I have airplanes out here in waves. Um, so we get the request for certain services. Um, for example, today the Defense Force needed to move a shipment of USAID tarps and four officers to Rumkey. The Defense Force officer who's working at Odyssey coordinating with us presented that need to us and within an hour and a half we had them on their way to Rumkey with the tarps and the supplies that they needed to get down there and the officers. Between Saturday and Sunday, the crew flew almost 30 recovery flights. Those flights included aerial supply drops to those islands that have been severely hit. The flights are always full or at least, um, you know, outdoing their specific job. Um, sometimes we take more fuel, uh, sometimes we take a lot of bulky stuff so we don't hit all our weights, but we are always at maximum capacity for the particular flight. Um, you know, right now we're just firing out flights as quickly as we have them available, so I'm never really able to tell exactly what we've done until the end of the day. Um, but we're doing over 20 round trips every single day, um, and that number is just growing every day as we get more and more volunteers and more and more support. The airdrops were done in South Long Island and in Long Key. Um, and what they do there is essentially it was a skydiving aircraft that had been um, donated from the United States. They open the door and we pack um, large surface area, light items, so they're not going to fall um, too quickly and hurt people on the ground. They open up, slow down, and push them out of the door um, just like an airdrop. Um, you know, it's very challenging because, of course, we can't airdrop a gallon of water because imagine dropping a, it would be like running a bombing mission over these islands if we're dropping water out. So that's, that's a special challenge. But now that the Navy, the, the Royal Navy is in Long Key in the Acklands area, um, they are going to be taking over a lot of that weight for us. There are 22 people on that island at the moment. The Odyssey Airport is one of several locations in the capital where donations can be made. Kelsey Johnson, ZNS Network News. was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Tourism today. It's our Bahamas tourism today. As you can see, several islands of the Bahamas were spared the wrath of Hurricane Joaquin, but it stormed through the southern islands, leaving behind a path of destruction. Well, the Ministry of Tourism's industry partners wasted no time offering to assist those in need and rebuild the tourism industry in the wake of disaster. We have been inundated with offers of assistance and of help, and I just cannot thank the Bahamian people sufficiently for that. The Ministry of Tourism, members of the Bahamas Hotel and Tourism Association, the various promotion boards and other industry partners plan to coordinate their relief efforts. We can in turn now mobilize with NEMA on how to get relief to these various islands, but that remains uppermost in our minds, getting the necessary relief to the various family islands. While the ministry's response team focuses on relief efforts in the south, 
The communications team will be busy spreading the word that it's business as usual for the islands in northern and central Bahamas. Really, it is imperative that the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism sends the message out to the world that we are open for business. You know, God is with us as you interview me here. The sun is shining on my face. I'm trying very hard, in fact, not to squint at it, and there are people on the beach. For the islands that weren't so lucky, Tourism Director General Joy Jibalu had this message. Our thoughts, our prayers, our good wishes, everything that goes with that goes out to the people of the islands most affected by this. Stay tuned to TourismToday.com and our Facebook page for more updates. For the Tourism Today Network, I'm Nikki DeVoe. With hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages due to Hurricane Joaquin, it's anticipated that local insurance companies will be inundated with claims. Tonight, there's one insurance company that's taking a very proactive approach to assisting its clients who may have been negatively impacted by the passage of Hurricane Joaquin. Senior manager of JS Johnson Insurance Brokers and Agents, Charles Johnson, says the company has already chartered a flight and their adjuster is already in flight assessing the damages by an aerial view. The incident uh, is so widespread with regards to a number of the family islands. Um, the first thing we are actually doing is running a list of all of the properties we have insured in the various islands. And we uh, have already uh, assigned adjusters to go and do um, a general survey of the islands to determine the extent of the damages. Once they would have report back to us, we will then review um, all of the various properties we have insured in the various islands. And we do know that at this very point in time, persons may not be in a position to report their losses to us simply because of the challenges with uh, communication. Now, there is some donations that they're looking for, and hopefully they're hoping that they can have some supplies. Once we have identified the properties that are damaged, then a justice will be placed on the ground where they will visit each property, carry out an assessment, assist the clients, uh, advise them in terms of how they may go, but uh, their claim. In most cases, it's, it's a question of obtaining um, estimates for the repairs or replacement uh, for the damages uh, to their property. Well, in other news tonight, the Potter's Key Dock, pretty busy as everyone tries to pitch in and offer some assistance to residents of the family island who need help. The AAA Marine Barge left the capital this morning with supplies headed into Long Island. But this afternoon, our Julian Gibson spoke to Captain Stefan Newbold about the journey and the conditions at sea. Julian, I'm about, I left Nassau at like 9 o'clock. Between 9 and 10 o'clock, and right now I'm nearly to Exuma. I'm about 12 miles out from Exuma, then I got about another 120 miles from Exuma. What's the weather conditions, Presley, out there on the water? Blowing very hard. We got about 18 to 20 out of the southwest. So it's really choppy out there? Yep, but slowly but surely we'll be all right. We'll make it. What exactly you're taking on your barge right now into Long Island? Most of what we got, Julian, is uh, like, you know, just food and uh, lots of water. And I got some fuel, some diesel gas, some portable stoves, and our equipment. I understand you also have some heavy equipment on the barge uh, in preparation, if need be, to clear the roads and clear a passageway in Long Island? Yes, I got, a, I got my big front end loader, my bobcat, and an excavator for lifting some boats. So estimated a time for arrival in Long Island will be what time and where do you go? You go into Salt Pond or you go into Sam's Dock or you try going to Clarence Town? No, I'm going to Salt Pond. Uh, I'm hoping to be there by tomorrow night sometime. U.S. Coast Guard authorities believe a cargo ship missing since Thursday with 33 crewmen aboard 
has been lost at sea. The Coast Guard held a press conference this morning, also reporting the discovery of human remains in a survival suit. The El Faro reportedly sent out a distress signal while in waters near Crooked Island in the height of Hurricane Joaquin. That was the last contact with the ship. While BTC technical teams are working to restore services in the Southeast Islands, BTC initiated communication centers for residents in Ragged Island, Inagua, and Clarencetown, Long Island, allowing them to make telephone calls and send emails to their loved ones free of charge. On Ragged Island, customers will be able to make telephone calls at the BTC office. In Inagua and Clarencetown, Long Island, customers are able to make telephone calls and send emails from the BTC locations there. Residents will be given three minutes each, allowing them to connect with loved ones. BTC advises at this time calls are only able to leave the island. Customers are not able to make calls into the island. The call centers will be open until 7 o'clock tonight and then from 10 o'clock tomorrow morning until 7 o'clock in the afternoon. On Sunday, BTC mobilized a 30-member assessment team to review the state of the network. That team traveled through San Salvador and Crooked Island on Sunday. The team then flew into Long Island on Monday. An initial report showed that there has been significant damage to BTC's systems in each of those affected areas. BTC continues to work diligently to restore services to all the impacted, all those impacted by the turmoil of Hurricane Joaquin and will provide regular updates on their progress. Bahamas Air is advising the traveling public that persons scheduled to travel to Long Island, Acklands, Crooked Island and San Salvador over the next 90 days can change their itineraries without incurring fees. Affected passengers may also request refunds by completing forms online at BahamasAir.com. Persons are asked to contact the Reservations Department at telephone number 7024140 or toll-free from the United States at telephone number 1-800-222-4262. Landing fees nationwide are being waived to accommodate relief distribution to the islands. The Minister of Transport and, and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, today announced that between Saturday over the weekend until further notice, landing fees at all government airports will not be payable by airports involved in the transport of goods to Long Island, San Salvador, Rumkey, Acklands, Crooked Island, Inagua, Mayaguana, and Cat Island. The Lady Rosalind will be used instead of the Lady Matilda for this week's voyage to the Southern Bahamas. The boat is sailing at 4 p.m. today. It did actually sail at, sail at that time into Mayaguana, Inagua, Acklands and San Salvador. Officials say no freight charges by the islands affected will be incurred by persons sailing into those islands. Top Slumber and Plumbing General Manager Mr. Raymond Collins says he has seen firsthand the impact that this storm has made in terms of its generosity going out. He says Top Slumber Company has considerable shares of shipment going out to those family islands affected by Hurricane Joaquin. We've had uh, quite a few people from Long Island, uh, the, the people that live here that can afford to help their community. They've been in this morning and purchased quite a bit of shingles and felt and plywood. Um, we've only had one person from Crooked Island. Um, I think she owns some resort down there, a lady. She came in and bought some plywood and some gray size and water shield and we got that out to the boat. We've had a lot of inquiries and people are taking quotes in for the insurance. Still in effect until November 30th. This year, Colin says Top Slumber will remain stocked up with all the necessary risk supplies. We got a lot of plywood, a lot of felt, and we do have shingles, and I've just placed an order this morning for five more trailers of shingles. So um, I hope to have them on the boat next week. So I think we'll be okay by the time everybody gets uh, going with the building part of it. Uh, a lot of it right now is, you know, water, food, and other essential items. I try, I try to keep ahead of everything, um, you know, for hurricane season. Um, this one, 
this one caught caught us all off guard really um, but I did have a lot of plywood like I say and felt uh, the shingles I just had the normal um, amount that I carry but I can get shingles very easily most of the time. Well, international donations are starting to come in to assist those affected by Hurricane Joaquin. Several New Providence-based donation hubs have been receiving food and water. Now, if you're interested in making a donation of canned food, water, or any other supplies, you're asked to take them to the Bahama Grill. That is, if your intention is for them to go to the island of Ackland specifically. You can also take those supplies to Bethel's Trucking on East Street South. The shipping company Express It has joined the hurricane relief efforts. All persons from Florida who wish to make a donation to the hurricane victims can do so by way of shipping it through Express It. Items being shipped should be marked in NEMA's name, however. The detailed list of items being shipped must be presented to the Express It office at 1020 Northwest First Court in Hallandale Beach, Florida. Now again, that's 1020 Northwest First Court, Hallandale Beach, Florida, zip code 33009. Voter registration was scheduled to begin across the country today. However, this is no longer the case. The process is taking a back seat on those southern Bahama Islands as a result of Hurricane Joaquin. Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall told ZNS News today that voter registration has been suspended for those islands directly impacted by the storm. But he says the process remains in effect for the rest of the Bahamas and Bahamian embassies abroad. In effect from today, the voter registration activities in the southern eastern Bahamas, all of those islands south of Elutra, um, will be postponed until the 26th of October 2015. And we hope that this would ease the pressure and the burden on the administrators and the people trying to recover from the ravages of Hurricane Joaquin. We will see later when come the 26th, God willing, how things uh, progress. Then we'll make further decisions thereafter. Now, just as a reminder, persons going to register must present their Bahamian passport or birth certificate along with their mother's birth certificate and a photo identification. The centers open for registration include the Flamingo Gardens Post Office, Elizabeth Estates, Carmichael Road, and General Post Office, office on East Hill Street. Mr. Hall also disclosed the new color of the voters' cards. It's purple. We will create a new register using voter's card purple with this color. But this card will not be issued immediately to a voter. Um, we will retain this card to come to my office and this card will be kept under close security until the boundary commission meets and we will decide whether there are changes to the boundaries. We hope we retain this card in the event there are changes to the boundaries. So anyone who registers with this card will be given a receipt as their proof or evidence that they did register for 2017. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force Marines left family and friends over the weekend to help those in urgent need on family islands that were severely impacted by Hurricane Joaquin on those islands of San Salvador, Acklands, and Crooked Island. A team of Marines were also flown into Stella Maris, Long Island, and will be supported by the HMBS Sir Derwood Knowles and patrol craft P301. Those are, will be in Clarence Town, Long Island. The Defense Force Marines will conduct damage assessments as well as assist local community leaders and agencies with organizing and distributing food, water, clothing, and shelter for immediate relief to those in need. A Defense Force aircraft will also be assisting the Red Cross with the transportation of emergency medical supplies to family islands. Acting Defense Force Commander Captain Tellis Bethel has also assigned Lieutenant Commander Michael Saunders to liaise with the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Vessel Lime Bay, which is a ship that specializes in providing disaster relief assistance. This is ZNS Total Sports. Brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.
Welcome to sports, everybody. The first round of the Republican Softball Association playoffs underway. Julian Gibson has a look back from action on Saturday night. Benson, nowadays everybody is coming out for the playoffs. Even this Mexican was taking in some of the action. No action whatsoever for the Bumagee operators, but they lost big 10 to 7 in game one. We had one in and a hitting, good hitting, and thank goodness for that. So we were able to pull off the win. Thank goodness our defense was, we made a few uh, good amount of errors tonight, but what we did was good enough. We just got to come back next time and we got to play better than tonight. The main thing is, even though they make the errors, they, we pull together, we stay together, we didn't get down. And that is the key, you know. No one by themselves is an army. So it takes a team, and that team tonight was 10, and we did it that way. The girls them um, get so anxious, they start, they start running all over the place. And then I think what really happened is that we made too many errors, too many simple mistakes. Uh, but it's a long series. We can get them. Now in the men's feature game, the BTC Warriors, boy, they took no chance with the mighty Mets whatsoever, pounding them, stopping them 12 to nothing. Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. Now the MPSA playoffs will continue tomorrow with the other two semifinal series. The Lady Singers lead the Sunshine Auto Wildcats one game to none, while the Commander Security Truckers, they're up 1-0 on the Iredes Hitmen. From there, playoff action resumes again on Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. All players and fans asked to bring hurricane relief supplies out to the park to help those affected by Joaquin. The local sloop sailing season will be back on the waters later on in the week. More on that tonight from Kelsey Johnson. Sloops hailing from islands that were devastated by the hurricane will still sail in the 23rd annual North Eleuther Regatta, which is considered to be the last big sailing event for B and C class boats. Despite the rumors, the three-day sailing event is still on and will take place this weekend in Harbor Island. Some of the fastest sloops in the two classes will be participating. Basically, we have the sloops that are based here in Nassau. There are some of them registered to the islands like... Um, Say so Crooked Island, we have the Udivas going, but they don't, they're not based in, in um, Crooked Island. They are based here in Nassau. So all those boats will be going, the ones who are based in Nassau. We have the Udiva and the B-Class, Ants, Nest, Passion. We have the Cobra, we have the um, Barbarian, those, and also the Whiplash, those in the B-Class. In the C-Class, we have um, boats like Dream Girl, Thunderbird, Sweet Island Girl, San Sally. Islands in the southern part of the Bahamas like Acklands, Crooked Island, Inagua, Rumkey, and Long Island were impacted by the hurricane. All of the islands except for Long Island will be represented. Commodore Ambrister explains why. It has something to do with the expenses as well as the boats in Nassau, the boats that are in New Providence. Some of them are from Long Island. Like take for instance the Sweet Island Girl, that's a Long Island boat. But to bring the boats from the island, the committees found out that it's kind of expensive to you have to transport the boat from the island to New Providence and then to um, North Elutra. So for that reason, it is basically the boats that are in Nassau. And I think um, when we are able to raise some more funds, then we'll be able to bring in some more boats. Because um, before, we used to have the A-class and the B-class, and there used to be Long Island boats like Robert Legend and those, sailing Harbor Island before. Here's why skippers keep coming back to the regatta. They have some very good prices, you know, B-class you could go them in as high as $1,500 first place and all of that. We have a lot of cup races, and I'd like to also say here, for the public information, that um, um, one of our sailors in Tours who's been around for a long time, this guy called Footy, I think everybody know him. He's like the staff, the show when we go to regatta, and the, the Lutro Committee, the Noy Lutro Committee has decided to have a race in his honor. The first race will start at 2 p.m. on Friday. Kelsey Johnson, ZNS Total Sports. Mario's Bowling and Entertainment Palace putting on its annual Paint the Lanes Pink event over the weekend in aid of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But that wasn't the only cause organizers had in mind this time around. After, you know, finding out about the devastation that happened on the family islands, we also decided to turn today into a hurricane relief. So we have boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that Bahamians have brought, and we are so very thankful. But we'd like to appeal to the Bahamian public that for the rest of the month, for the rest of the year, three persons on the family islands, they need our help. And so we are definitely going to still be collecting stuff to send to the family islands. The fourth annual First Caribbean International Bank Fund Run Walk for the Cure taking place yesterday. Bahamians got up early and turned out in large numbers to support this worthy cause. We're 
so pleased. We were very happy. Um, as we're all aware, cancer affects all of us. There's really no person in the Bahamas today who can say that they have not been impacted by cancer in some way, shape, or form, whether directly or indirectly. And so we are really banding together with persons across the region and our parent company in Canada to show solidarity in the fight and make sure that people understand that there is power in numbers and we want everyone to get involved in helping to prevent cancer but also to find a cure. It's very heartwarming to see so many people coming together and for such an important cause. We had over a thousand people throughout the Bahamas walking today, 10,000 throughout the Caribbean. It's, it's really quite heartwarming to see everyone pulling together. The Popeyes Bahamas Bowl will be back at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium on Christmas Eve. And once again, this college football showcase will be broadcast to the world on ESPN. We don't view this as a sprint. This is a marathon. This is a long-term investment uh, in a postseason college football game in your beautiful country. Uh, we, uh, we look forward to building it step by step every year, adding a great element uh, and hopefully uh, satisfying the, the, the purpose of all the different key stakeholders from, uh, uh, from our major sponsors uh, to, uh, to the tourism, uh, uh, Ministry of Tourism within the Bahamas, uh, to the folks that run uh, this wonderful facility, uh, the stadium here, uh, right on through. This is why we um, designed this place. This is why we're in the business of sports. And I keep telling people, I know they don't believe me, but no joke, the best is yet to come. you got some incredible things coming. I can make an announcement for you all before Christmas. Go rock your socks. Now, in addition to putting on the game itself, the organizers of the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl also doing their part to assist with the growth of American football here in the Bahamas with the donation of some much-needed equipment. All the equipment has already been ordered and it's sitting on the dock waiting to come over. It should be over soon, but the family islands have already been selected. They're, the program will actually be two teams on each of the islands of Abaco, um, Berry Islands, Bimini, and Exuma, and then five teams in Grand Bahama and here in New Providence. The Commonwealth American Football League has a new executive board in place and their 2015-2016 season is expected to start in short order. Season is starting October 17. The, the players are supposed to be um, fly, um, traveling to Freeport to play the Crushers. Um, the league is on schedule of, of, of starting on time. And that will do it for sport. Stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight comes back after the break. In our final look at what are we going to get you started off with some temperatures around the family of islands. Uh, Freeport 77, 80 degrees in Bimini, the Berry Islands 85, 79 in Green Tulkey, Abaco, Marsh Harbor 82, 85 in Harbor Island, that's Naughty Lutra, Rock Sound 85, 86 degrees here in the capital. Fresh Creek Central Andrews 84, 86 in Kemp Space on Andrews, also Staniel Key in Exumachine and Otterstown, Cat Island at 86. San Salvador, Rum Key round out to 86, 87 in Exuma Mainland, Long Island 88, Ragged Island also 88. Crooked Island and Acklands may go on to 87 degrees, another 88 popping up in Matthew Town in Agua and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Boating forecast tonight brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Paint Center. In the northwest and central islands, southwest winds 10 to 15 knots, wave fights 2 to 4 feet with some moderate swells out there. Low tide taking place at 926 tonight. In the southeast Bahamas, the winds southeast 10 to 15 knots, wave fights at 2 to 4 feet. And then in the northwest Bahamas, tomorrow, southwest winds 12 to 18 knots, wave fights 3 to 6 feet with a moderate chop. And those moderate swells continuing out there. Boaters, so exercise some caution. Low tide 936 in the morning, high tide 356 in the afternoon. For the central and southeastern islands, southwest winds 10 to 15 knots, wave fights 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. And on Wednesday in the northwestern islands, the winds staying out of that southwest quadrant 10 to 15 knots, and the wave fights holding at 2 to 4 feet. Tide wise, low at 1038 in the morning, high tide taking place at 453 in the afternoon. In the central and southeastern islands, winds out of the southeast. 10 to 15 knots in the way fights 2 to 4 feet. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It is time now for your trial forecast. And your trial forecast is brought to you by Royal Star Assurance.
that's going to do it for your travel forecast brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. It's time now for your complete weather forecast and we'll get you started in the tropics. Tropical wave out in the far eastern Atlantic about a thousand miles to the east of the Las Antilles. It is moving toward the west at about 15 miles per hour and it's still a long shot from here but we will continue to monitor that over the next several days and keep you posted. Probability, but 20% chance over the next five days. Then we have this other uh, little upper level uh, low here on the Atlantic, and that too is uh, firing up some showers and thunderstorms to the north of the Leeward Island. And this is uh, Hurricane Joaquin, which is now category one, about 254 miles north of Bermuda. It is now moving toward the north northeast at about 12 miles per hour. And we expect that system to become a cold core low by Wednesday as it moves over the cold waters of the northern Atlantic. And the remnants of that is expected to reach the coast of uh, Europe by the weekend, so that will add some uh, showers to their forecast as well. Old fall boundary over the northwest Bahamas, and that is providing some cloud cover with pockets of showers and thunderstorms over Grand Bahama and uh, Abaco in particular. Some of that could uh, reach the capital during the course of the night. In the central parts of the country, not much of a problem there after a very rough week last week, and we're still having some residual uh, showers just to the uh, east of the island of Mayaguana. The forecast tonight, partly cloudy with a few passing showers, 77 degrees for your low temperature. And tomorrow, we're looking at partly sunny, uh, somewhat on the warm side, rain chance about 20 percent, 87 degrees for your high temperature and your heat index tomorrow about 95 degrees. Five day forecast, keeping those temperatures below 90s. By the way, for the next five days, rain chance bump back up on Wednesday and Thursday, where there's a good chance of some showers and isolated thunderstorms. And your nighttime temperatures, they're going to be holding in the upper 70s. It's good to see the weather forecast looking like that back again. To numbers, yeah. huh? And the heat index in double digits finally Absolutely. again. Absolutely. So we are now fully into fall, it seems. Excellent, Baz. Thanks a lot. That'll do it for us here on the Bahamas tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure the road to recovery will be broadcast right here. So stay tuned for complete and continuing coverage of the recovery. Good night, everyone.